There is a mother effing trailer for the Wheel of Time, and I got to watch it. <laughs> So there is a ton of news to get to today. We got the teaser trailer. We have a release date. We have a Q&A from Rafe and Rosamund. It's a packed week with news and notes. So let's go ahead and get right on into it. But first, spoiler warning. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of yellow. There will not be any major spoilers in the video outside of a few image-based and minor thematic spoilers. I'm not going to be speaking on major plot points here. If you haven't read the books, you should be good to watch this video. But if you want no spoilers whatsoever, you've been warned. Now, in case you're curious, in this video, when it comes to the trailer, I will be giving you my general impressions, what I think it means for the series, and more just general feelings about the trailer. Then in a video here coming out on Sunday, I will be releasing my major breakdown video, where I will be going through scene by scene and pointing out all of the small and large things that are there to find. You will not want to miss that video. But let's not bury the lead. Let's dive right on into the trailer. I'm not going to play it here. You can go ahead and watch the Amazon Prime feed for the full trailer. This will be a horrible way to see it for the first time, but I will have clips playing so you can see certain things that we're talking about. But I wanted to start with my general reactions here first. In general, I was absolutely blown away by the trailer. I was not expecting it to be this long. It was a little more than two minutes. I was certainly not expecting them to show some of the things they did, but we'll talk more about that here in a moment. I think I think that this was an excellent first trailer for The Wheel of Time, and I sent the trailer in a very informal way to a bunch of non-book reader friends of mine, and the response was overwhelmingly positive. Literally, I was told by one of my friends that has refused to read the books for years that it looked amazing and that he would absolutely watch it, which is a huge step because he is not a fantasy fan. Why do I mention non-book readers? Well, that is who this trailer was for, guys. The trailer was labeled a teaser trailer, and while I would say it did give away a good amount of the plot, it was not as focused on the plot and characters, but it was more focused on showing action, spectacle, and generally wowing people into wanting to watch it. This trailer has most of us fans super excited, but we weren't the target audience as much as it is out there to announce Wheel of Time to the world in a very big way and start that conversation. Expect to see this trailer in YouTube ads, I already have, in movies in the theater, commercials on TV, and anywhere else that you would typically expect to see any type of movie advertising. This is the exact style trailer that many of us predicted would come out after Comic-Con with the intention of bringing in new fans. So there is also a very clear focus here on highlighting some of the more famous actors and actresses in the series. This was obviously smart from a marketing perspective. We see Rosamund with multiple appearances in there, she's the star, and a voiceover. We see Alvaro Morte feature, we see Daniel Henney, and we see Michael McElhatton who not only gets to be in the trailer but he does a voiceover even though he will likely not play a major role in many episodes of the show. He's just familiar to people due to his work with Game of Thrones and he has a very distinctive silky smooth voice. Sophie Akinato also features very nicely in the trailer here. Overall they are clearly hoping this pulls in the interests of non-book readers and so far I think it has. So let's talk about the contents of the trailer for a minute. As I mentioned earlier there was one major location that I was not expecting to see in the trailer Tarvalin, but it was absolutely breathtaking to see that on screen. I actually thought they would save that for later, but I guess it makes sense to show us that because it looks really badass. But this very thing is playing into a larger theme that I think Rafe has been setting us up for in previous Q&As. They are very much highlighting the role women play in the world of the Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time, as he has said, is a meeting point between the Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings barely has any female characters in it, and Game of Thrones tends to brutalize the women, even those that have power. Wheel of Time has always been kind of an opposite power dynamic to that, and that is very obvious in this trailer that this is something different. Women are the primary focus of the trailer. Whether that be Egwene and Nynaeve or the Aes Sedai, they take the majority of the focus in the trailer, clearly communicating that this story is going to be different. They feature Tarvalin as a major focus point in the trailer, and that's a major change from book one of The Wheel of Time. And it's something that I think is being done deliberately to highlight the power of women in the series. Again, it's something that sets Wheel of Time apart. So that being out of the way, let's hit the CGI in the trailer. I thought for the most part that this was done fairly well. There are certain things about channeling that I would like to see a little bit more of before I give a final opinion on it, because it seems like they're somewhat simplifying 
channeling or weaving to make it easier to understand. I'm not sure I would agree with that change if that is indeed a change they're making, but we don't have a ton to go off here, so I'm gonna give them some time. It just seems like we're not seeing multiple strands of the power, but just the one power in general. I know that may seem like a nitpicky point, but I think that's such a distinctive part of the magic system. I'm hoping we see that, but I will reserve judgment because we got to see very little channeling outside of weaves of air is really what we saw. I thought, however, the background CGI in the shots was breathtaking. There were some amazing landscape shots that were put in with CGI. I thought those were great. I thought the Trollocs and Murdral were spectacular. I know some people have not liked the Murdral. I completely disagree. I will talk more about that in my full trailer uh, breakdown and deep dive here on Sunday but I loved the way that the shadow spawn looked. I am curious to what you guys think of the trailer as a whole. Let me know in the comments of the video. Again, this was simply my non-spoiler impressions. I will have a breakdown video that I cannot wait to share with you all with all the Easter eggs, analysis, and really cool stuff in the trailer. That will be coming out on Sunday. But what's crazy is there is a ton of other news outside of the trailer. Not only did we get the trailer, but we got the most comprehensive and informative Q&A from Rafe and Rosamund together this time. There is literally a ton they answered. So much so, in fact, that I'm only going to cover the questions here that I think tell us something new. I'm gonna leave out a bunch of the stuff they answered. Now, before moving on to Rafe and Rosamund's Q&A, let me give a quick thank you to the this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a massive online learning community that offers thousands and thousands of professional courses set up for you to learn something new from your own home. You don't need any crazy expensive college classes and you can learn to do pretty much anything. I've been a long time user of Skillshare and I've learned a lot uh, of what I know from various courses here on Skillshare. It's super cheap also, which I think gives it a crazy value. One of my favorite YouTubers, non-Wheel of Time YouTubers, is a young guy named Gox Art who does some amazing editing in his videos and he entirely learned how to do that on Skillshare. So it's an amazing platform. If you aren't sure you would like it, you can try it for free. Click the link in the description of the video, try a free month of Skillshare Premium and see how you like the service. I think that you're gonna like it, I think you'll think it's worth it, and like I said, it's incredibly cheap, even without the free month. Make sure to check it out and let's get back to the video. So let's go ahead and get into the Instagram Q&A from Rafe Judkins and Rosamund Pike. The first question we're gonna look at comes from GLA Jake. Which part of the trailer are you most excited to see the full version of and why? And Rafe answered, I'm really thrilled for fans to see more of Winter Night. Rosamund said Shadar Loga, the city where you really feel how the dark is a material substance that chases and consumes. The visual uh, effects and extremity of this sequence really haunt her. So I totally also want to see more of Winter Night. It's the first major action set piece that we are likely to get and it comes in the first episode. I think for new fans watching the series, this may give a feel of how things will go and show a little bit of what is to come. I'm excited to see it. I also love how Rosamund mentions the creepiness factor of Shadar Logoth. I'm super excited for that. And it must have resonated with her because you're going to see this come up again with Rosamund, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, the next question comes from Hearts of the Witch's Path for Rosamund. What was it about this story that spoke to you and made you want to play such an amazing female? Rosamund answered, the way the women of the Aes Sedai harness the elements of the universe to unleash incredible power. That interested me a lot. Playing an amazing female is always better than playing a mediocre female. The thing I think that's worth mentioning here is that Rosamund, who is an internationally acclaimed actress, Oscar nominated, won all kinds of awards, bought into this role for a reason. And I think it shows the strength of the writing that she feels that Moraine is such a super strong female character that she wanted to choose this role. She's a very famous movie actor. And so for her to take a long-term project like The Wheel of Time I'm on says that she truly believes in this character. I love that. The next question came from Kit Sungari Chance. I probably horribly butchered that. How many nightmares did that flaming fade give you? Rafe said, not many, as I will always remember him as Dan, who was spinning in circles on his horse on a Slovenian mountain, doubling the Westwood. Rosamund said, his very feminine lips concealing rows and rows of teeth gave me nightmares. And don't get me started on the skeleton mask his horse wears. So I like Rosamund's description here. I think it's perfect. One of the things I was really hoping that they would do is play up the horror elements in the Wheel of Time books. And it appears they're gonna be doing that. I think Rafe's comment is funny because Dan the Murdral is a guy in a CGI suit riding around on a horse. Guys, that's how the sausage is made. But I do love the fact that the horses are wearing masks, which you can actually see in the trailer. Next question comes from Think Pole. How much will season one cover? Book one or spread across several? It looks amazing. Rafe said season one will cover book one, plus some of book two, 
and even book three, but also not all of book one, but some of it is in season two cryptic enough so outside of being deliberately cryptic here it rafe does indicate that there will be some book three in season one something i had not expected i'm not entirely sure actually what that could be at this point but it will be interesting to check out as we move on with the other trailers where we might actually see a little bit more does anybody have a thought of what book three stuff could be in the show let me know in the comments of the video the next question comes from a twitter handle with a bunch of letters that i'm not going to read i would read it but you have to have a easier to read twitter handle sorry which location was your favorite to film at specifically in the show and in real life. Rosamund said, the world inside the walls of Shadar Logoth is particularly affecting and eerie. Our production designer created a powerful and sinister set for the abandoned desolate city. But for me as an actor, the city of Tarvalin was so rich, it was built from the ground up with the most intricate detail, it is stunning. So Rosamund here clearly loves the effect of Shadar Logoth, as I mentioned before. She is so excited about it at this point. She's mentioned it a couple times. In regards to Tarvalin, they absolutely did build the set from the ground up and it's sort of a reimagining. I know that we've seen in the trailer the large view of Tarvalin. That's mostly CGI. What she's talking about is the set that they built at Jordan Studios. Either way, the White Tower is featuring very prominently in the show on the island of Tarvalin. We'll talk about that more in the spoiler video, but that's very obvious, and I thought it looked amazing. Next question comes from Ecano13. How excited are you to see your audience's responses after such a long wait? Rosamond answered, I love how warm and welcoming the Wheel of Time fan base has been. I hope we offer escape, excitement, mystery, and something to keep people inspired through the end of the year. Rafe said, this is a complicated thing because... As a fan of many epic book series, seeing them brought to life is simultaneously thrilling and a little bit sad, as it changes forever a world that you saw in your own head while reading. And I think Rafe hits the nail on the head here in regards to adaptations. For lots of fans, this is super exciting. For me, it's super exciting. But anytime someone else creates a visual that doesn't line up with the way that you saw it in your head while reading, it's gonna make it feel different to you forever. That's part of adaptations. The visuals here are likely to take over the headcanon for readers as well. So it's cool to me that Rafe acknowledges this as a thought. That's always gonna be the strength of reading is you get to create the world in your head. Whereas when you put it on screen, you have to make it visual. And so someone is choosing something, whereas you get to choose in your own head when you read. That's always going to happen. I'm excited for it, though. Next question is from Avroth Elnor for Rosamund. What is your favorite Moraine speech? Rosamund said, Moraine can be very silent, so when she speaks, we listen. In the books, it's the Weep for Manetherin speech. The idea that the people of the two rivers, the old blood runs deep. So I think this is most people's favorite Moraine speech. But the reason I think it's worth noting here is that I'm hoping it makes it into the show. Rosamund mentioning it here gives me hope that it has. But I also know that Rosamund has read Eye of the World and it could just be her talking about her favorite moment in the books. Let's hope at least. But if you do want more on Manetherin, check out my Story of Manetherin video where we go over that speech thoroughly. Next question is from D. Sandvalo XO. Okay, there you go. How are you able to come up with how the weaving of the one power looks? Rosamund and said, I needed to feel like you would believe Moraine had this power if there were no visual effects. The most important thing for me was that I felt connected to something greater than myself. Robert Jordan is so eloquent in what, what it feels like to channel, the feeling of the one power filling your veins, the risk of it, the risk of drawing too much, and the necessity of respecting it and being trained to use it. And then Rafe answered, all of the visual effects teams looking at the One Power were going off documents of descriptions of it pulled straight from the books and using that as jumping off points. So I love this answer and we get two very different perspectives on this. From Rosamund, we get the perspective of an actress and how she has to act to show channeling. You can tell Rosamund has immersed herself in this role and she's trying to understand of what it might be like to be able to channel. Now Rafe answer is more about the technical way in which they portrayed it. He talks about pulling things from the books. This is clear in that we see Aes Sedai using hand gestures quite a bit. Something that is noted in the books. Now, I wonder if it's going to be different when we see other groups of women channeling in the books, but I guess we'll see. The next question comes from here, Education Pod. What is the show rated? Will people be able to watch it with their teenagers? Rafe answered, people should certainly be able to watch this with their teenagers. Now this is interesting and something I'm not super happy with. Taking this comment and combining it with the fact that other folks have spotted a TV 14 rating on Amazon's site, I was really hoping for a TV MA, personally, mature, because then they could explore more of the themes from the books without having to censor anything or hold back. I am very much hoping that the show won't feel less authentic because it feels 
to a degree muzzled. Uh, I know many are gonna disagree with me on that, but that's just my personal feeling on it. I was hoping for TVMA. Next question comes from Moral Filth, and this is for Rosamund. How did you feel about seeing Maureen's powers visually for the first time? And Rosamund said, I felt like a badass. I said to Rafe when I first saw it, I need this video of me shooting fireballs to show my sons again and again. So I included this answer primarily because she mentions throwing fireballs something we specifically did not see in the trailer. I think it's important because most of the channeling we did see appeared to be using waves of air and weather manipulation type things. So I'm glad that we're gonna be seeing other types of weaves like fireballs and probably they'll look different. So just FYI, it's out there. The next question comes from Logan or something. How much of the merge draw are, is practical effects? And Rafe answered, the merge draw, like most of all elements in the show, is as much practical as we could manage, enhanced by vis visual effects. I always think that gives a more disturbing and real feeling quality than full VFX creatures. Now this isn't necessarily new. He's been saying that they're gonna do this forever, but now that we've seen a merge draw on screen, I love that it's a combination of both practical and CGI. I think it gives it a more tangible feeling uh, and it makes the monsters more real. Next question comes from Samson L. Ganatis. I probably butchered that. Can we get some information on the composer or the score for the show? I'm so excited for this. Thank you both so much for bringing this to life. And Rafe answered, if Amazon lets me this answer go through, this is me proudly announcing that we have the most incredible composer working on the show by the name of Lauren Balfe. You've got a tiny hint of his music uh, with the reveal of the logo and what he's doing is really special. Well guys, this is huge. There was a lot of speculation about who the composer might be when David Buckley left the project. Whatseries.com had predicted that Lauren Balfe would be the composer that they chose. And now this is confirmation. And that's amazing because Lauren is one of the best composers out there right now. He's won Grammys for movies and television shows. He has won Best Television Composer and Best TV Theme for his previous work. And just based on the theme for this trailer, I think we're gonna have an amazing score for the show. And again, look at Game of Thrones for how much a score matters. This is a big pickup in my opinion. Next question comes from PooJamK15, what a name. This one was both for Rosamund and Rafe. How do the final visuals with the completed visual effects align with what you had in mind when reading the script and filming on location? Rosamund answered, it's so important to have a living, vivid world inside your imagination when you're shooting sequences that will be completed with CGI. And the production have always made sure that we have plenty of visual references for how things would look as we went along. We have never worked on a set which at least part of the world is not built. We've always had elements of texture and atmosphere of the finished world to work with. And then Rafe answered, making a TV show at its best is about collaboration, about seeing how your initial vision for something is lifted and changed and made better by people around you. So my favorite visuals in the show are the ones that are far better than I imagined writing the scripts. So when Rosamund talks about the sets usually being partially built, that gives me a lot of hope. Essentially what she is saying here is that they were never shooting on just a green screen set. They always had sets and the CGI was just there to complement the physical world that they were acting in. I think that helps with the immersion both for the actors and for us watching. Last question uh, from Tamina. Will there be a second trailer? And Rafe answered yes and longer. What would you most like to see in it? So as stated by Rafe before, this is a teaser trailer. We will be getting a longer full length trailer in the weeks to come. That's likely going to focus more on the characters and plot of the first season and we'll give a glimpse to non-book readers about what the story is about. Where, where this trailer was more for the spectacle, the other trailer will be for story and character focus. That is if they typically follow the normal trailer release schedules, which I think they are. My main takeaway though from this Q&A is that they are now very willing to speak about things as now there are real assets out there and they can actually talk about some of them. Expect to see more and more of this stuff as we get closer to the release. Speaking of release dates, the trailer also gave us a final release date and then later, we got the actual release schedule. So the show will drop on Friday, November 19th. Episodes one, two, and three will drop on the 19th. And then we're gonna have a weekly release schedule each Friday until the season finale on December 24th. This is in line with how Amazon has been releasing shows lately with a three drop episodes and then a weekly after. I would have preferred a completely weekly release schedule, but I will take this as a compromise. As a fan, I'll be excited to be able to binge three episodes in a row. As a content creator, that's another story. This should be a lot of fun though, to be able to watch with family as well, given that there are two major US holidays that where you tend to be with your family, 
and Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve that we're going to actually be a part of this show. So I think Christmas Eve, I'll be watching this with my family. That'll be awesome. What do you guys think of the release schedule? Uh, do you like how they're releasing the show? Let me know in the comments of the video. And really, what do you think of the, the whole trailer release in general? Give me all your trailer thoughts in the comments. And now let's hit the winner of last week's contest. This week's winner of the Tar Valen Harbor Master t-shirt is Mary Parker. Mary, message me on Twitter or on Discord and I will get your details and I'll get you out that shirt. Let's also announce this week's contest. In honor of the trailer, in honor of the fact that we see Tar Valen in the trailer, we are going to be giving away five Tarval and Harbor Master t-shirts this week. You heard it, five. So here's what I need you to do. To enter into this contest, I'm gonna be picking five of you. As always, you need to like the video. You need to be subscribed to the channel to be eligible. What I want you to do is leave a comment on the video. Let me know what you are most excited about from the trailer. Give me your feedback and say that you're entering into the contest and I will select five of you for next week. That's exciting. If you are new to the Wheel of Time, I make exclusively Wheel of Time based content here. I have news videos like this, tons and tons of lore videos on the channel breaking down this amazingly complex world. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as we get closer and closer to the release date of the show. I will be doing multiple weekly breakdown videos for the show once it's out, as well as other new lore videos. You do not want to miss out, so make sure to subscribe. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out my patreon as that is the absolute best way to support what i do here also check out skillshare guys thank you all for watching and i will see you sunday with the trailer breakdown video thanks for watching and peace out tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?